Uh, open topic, freedom of teachings. Um, talking about various things here. Um, yeah, I wanted to finish that story, but maybe I'll do that at, other, at some other point because it's pretty lengthy. Um, but again, yeah. So anything you want to talk about, Monica? Start off with? I have no questions. And well, that, no, you no, don't need no, any. Not no any, you don't need any. <laughs> this week. <laughs> well, is there, but no, but is there anything that you want to talk about? Just talk about. Anything that you would like to share or just things that you might have been thinking about here lately, things that or you maybe think and been thinking about for a very long time, personal experiences, whatever it is, anything you would like to, to open up and talk I, about? I believe, um, and, and it was interesting your opinion about that, I believe we enter uh, in the ascension with the 40s uh, um, I don't know the word in English, with the pole shift, and the pole shift would be probably for one year or a little bit more. And uh, this is um, a feeling inside. This would initiate the different energies and the harvesting as well, in my opinion, for wherever it goes. <laughs> And um, yes, I, I believe um, correlation uh, correlation with that. What as far do you as think about that, um, I don't really think of anything about any of that. Uh, at one point, I actually would entertain some of this stuff, but um, coming to know or reintegrating aspects of my energy over the last. Well, especially over the last year. I just have a different focal point. Number one, I'm in the moment. Number two, I understand the reason why I am here. Not, not in its entirety in respect to my mission and the things, if you want to use that word mission. I always felt that word was kind of lofty, but I'll go ahead and use that word mission. And... Um, I'm very content with just being in that space. I know there is no need to worry about anything. I transcend all this to begin with. Not only me, but we all do. And that's more that's even more comforting to know that that we're the oneness of all. And it's held together through love and the way that we move forward and expand within it, which the expansion of the of the being itself, you and I creates the expansion of the creation and the creation or the uh, manifestation part of it. Uh, I see it simply as a tool in order to be able to achieve that. So to see and experience self differently is for the purpose of expansion. Uh, we learn through that. It's through experience that we learn because within our higher state of being which transcends the very creation it is a form we are formless so we're not an entity so it's a formless non-entity all-knowing all-powerful but in order for that being to expand itself it has to experience itself in different ways and that's what manifestation is for and that's what it means to be uh, a soul. A soul is a subdivision of self. Uh, according to Keelantic morphogenic science, we have 1728 subdivisions of self within manifestation. And they're all living simultaneous lives in the same space, you know. I didn't mean Earth, but in the same space because everything that's occurring is right here and now. It just the illusion is that it it's things are distant from one another. It's um, yeah, that's 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 a that's a topic I don't think anybody can really <laughs> here on Earth talk about because it just there's really no beginning to, or end to that. The goes into the complexity of the design and how amazing it is in respect also that we are the ones that enables it to expand 
because it's through consciousness. It is a living um, structure. Even the hologram is a living structure. It's a geomathematical program, as it's, it's as it said, which I can see the relevance of that. But at the same time, it's alive. It's living. There's nothing that isn't. So I don't really see anything other than like what you're talking about, like events or something that went, might take place. Um, personally, I don't see that shift happening. I see something else happening. I think I see maybe you're saying the same thing and we're probably saying the same thing in a different way. That things are kind of straightening itself out. And one of the reasons for being here is because this is like a, uh, a pinnacle time where things are moving forward in a most positive way. And uh, reintegration, restoration, all these things that bring things back to the natural order of things, you know, or joy and love and the true nature of who and what we are and that we're no longer uh, necessarily uh, conflicted with these artificial emotions such as hate, you know, fear, mm -hmm. and things that, all, that would, anything that would be the antithesis of love and joy, right? Because it's through love and joy is from which we expand. Um, and because everything is created in through love and joy, you know, that's the nature of the being to begin with. We're meant to experience one another and share with one another in love and joy and in, in, in such, in such innocence, actually. What do I mean by that? What do I mean by innocence? I mean, through love and joy, the true essence of who we are, there is an innoc innocence. There's just the, there's a beauty. Maybe that's even a, it's really hard to describe. But you obviously know. Just um, to re-experience that, you know, even if it's just a little bit here within manifestation to be able to experience that and share it means everything here. You know, it a little bit of that goes a long way, you know. Hi, Deborah. Is DV Deborah Winter? <laughs> I assume that. Wait, I lost you guys. Hang, I don't know where you went. Hang on. Oh, there you, you are. Me? Yeah, I can see you now. OK. OK, great. Hi. Oh, it's great. working. Hi, Deborah. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, working. it's working. It's working. It's working. Yeah, it's well, working. on my end, because before, I, like I said, I couldn't see anybody. I just oh, see. I, no, I couldn't see anybody except for Monica. And that was it. And then everybody else, I couldn't see anybody. <laughs> um, it's open discussion, open topics. So whatever. Why? Uh, you have anything to, to bring to the table or the platform as it would be? Well, I was kind of, um, I was excited to hear what Bevan wanted to um, say about the continuation of spiritual hygiene. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so she had pretty, she had some uh, uh, pretty good insight about that. And uh, unfortunately, you know, she's not, Unless she just shows up out of the blue, but she yeah. has things she's got to do. And, uh, yeah. and we're at, we're, yeah, you you know where I've been talking to you about here as far as that. And you like, and you feel real connected to that as well. And I was, we spent some time, me and Monica spent some time talking about it. Um, maybe we would like to s talk a little bit about that. Okay. And that okay. is, folks, for you that who are listening. Uh, we're talking about getting out of the body. We should be able to get out of the body anytime we want to, and we should be able to recover information we need to. So when we enter back into the body with a manifestation, we are able to bring that within manifestation in order to assist humanity. In this case, we're you know dealing with Earth. Where there's a lot of things that has to be done here. And getting out of the body, uh, that leaves no room for speculation. You have direct knowing. You don't need anybody to tell you anything. You can find that out when you get out and you can get assistance through your soul family or through your guides, you know, and when, when you're working through love, you don't have no uh, concern about fear and people have this idea of, well, you know, you're, you're going to get possessed. Something's going to jump on you. It's like, no, if you're, if you're in a space, okay, number one, I don't hear anybody talk about that. And besides, even if you did, you probably manifested that out of your own fear. OK, um, it's important to understand fear is a false emotion. It's not real. It's artificial. The true nature of who you are 
has nothing to do with that. It's the complete antithesis, which is love and joy. Allow yourself to embrace truly what your birthright is. No fear has no part of you. And so leave that alone because this is part of our natural process. This is part of our higher faculties. So embrace it. Embrace your birthright. So in order to assist those here as well as ourselves, it's important that we regain with incomplete knowing, you know, to reflect on the idea of confidence, right? If we don't need anybody explaining things to us. We can learn directly and not, and not just learn things directly, but everything that we need to recover, we can recover. Mm -hmm. And therefore we can bring back with us demonstration of power because then all our higher faculties start to now engage and we can bring all those gifts of the, or the true aspect of our nature in part, but in part is can be quite a bit into manifestation in order to maintain assisting. And what does that mean that we can, we can do many things. Number one, we can heal the body. And for some people, that's a huge thing. It's very important so that you're well to be able to do things here and have the energy to be able to do it, to be able to heal others, to be able to assist others of getting out of their body once you learn how to do it, to be able to release souls that are bound here yeah. because they have been so cut off and they know nothing of their true nature and they're, they're hiding in the alcoves and recesses within the earth in fear to be able to go to them and ask them if they want to go home. Okay. Oh, see, see, turning on our higher faculties or having access to them allows our service or ministry, whatever word you want to put with that, that much more of what it should be. Stumbling around here on earth, just trying to figure things out and trying to put two and two together just will consume a huge amount of time. And next thing you know, your time's up and you really didn't accomplish what you intended to do, you know, and then what do you, what do you do? Because you know who you are, you know what you are, you come back. That's what you do. And that's what we've done. Some people, not everybody's done that, but a lot of people have done that and continue to do that because there's no fear. They know who they are. And they know this is a, a, like I use the word tool. It's a tool for expansion. But within that tool, there is a whole lot of variables. And because there's a whole lot of variables, all kinds of things can happen. As we well know here on Earth, we can see evidence of that, especially those who are walking in the spirit or have a spirit, spiritual awareness of the reality of that. You know, such as, you know, referring to the idea how people can get trapped here, you know, get locked in because they don't know where to go. They don't know who they were. They don't know. They don't know. And they don't know anything other than what they experienced within this incarnation right. you know and they may have died traumatically or whatever the case may be but it it kind of freeze locks them into that state how much better can we assist if we go out of the body and we find those and we can help them go back home yes you know so i mean it is our birthright to be able to do this and what comes with it it's so many advantages and so much understanding and so much blessing personally that we can turn around and share with others. We can work here within the incarnation and bring that power and those abilities into that. And then when we go out of the body, we're do so we're doing it, you know, twofold. We're doing it in the body and we're doing it out of the body. You know, so we're Definitely within one lifetime, we would definitely accomplish our mission, you know. Mm -hmm. If we could, do, if that is, if that was taught, that's the thing. That's what's so important about being taught in an early age here when you're blank slated. And blank slated is really about the frequency drop. Of course, there's a refraction of consciousness and there's an alteration within the body that makes it that much more difficult, of course, that much more challenging. But if these things were learned, from an early age, without fear, without any religiosity, without any of that stuff, just love, 
truly understanding of what things be able to teach, you know, the -hmm. child, the, the, the young incarnation, because we're not really children now, are we? Not really, because we're ancient of days. But the thing of it is within that, if you're able to do that, this is passed down from generation. And how many generations would it take for this to turn around? Three. Mm-hmm. Three, and it would be flipped over. It's really that simple. And that's the reason why it's all this, a lot of this stuff has been kept under wrap, you know? It's like for those that have certain agendas, those who have agendas simply forgot who they are. Regardless of how long they've been around in manifestation or not. Regardless of they live thousands and thousands and thousands of years, whatever, it doesn't matter. They obviously forgot who they are, and they're they're in that identity, and they forgot who and what they truly are. So, regardless of the agenda behind all that silliness, um, you know, and that's the reason why you know I want to keep things my way because this is the only way I know, which they don't know very much, obviously. Even though if they may be brilliant, but obviously they <laughs> they don't know the most important things. And they forgot it. So I can understand why they're that controlling element there. But it would because they understand simply this. I know they're smart enough to know this. And I'm not picking on anybody. I'm just saying they're smart enough. They're smart enough to know if if this would come forward, which it needs to be, and it would just happening now. It would turn things around really quick. Like I said, three generations, and this would be this would just flip over. Simple as that. Mm-hmm. And when you have all that consciousness, basically being able to go out of the body and regain everything and pull things and, br- and bring bring in the energy here and all this different stuff, that what would, what would happen when, if that happened? Because the majority of the universal construct is that. Well, it would cause everything to shift. Well, what would, what would it shift to? Consciousness. Next thing you know. It's no longer entropy. There's no longer finite energy. We're back to the natural order again. Very quickly. See how quickly it could happen? I mean, yeah. seriously, can you see how? And it's that's the thing. That's the whole thing. And it's so within manifestation, you get people chasing a lot of different stuff, you know, and it's like it's right there dangling under your nose all the time, yeah. you know? Yeah. So for me, my priority at this point is like to get out of the body because for those reasons, it's extending my ability to be able to do what I am here for. You know, it's not so that I can have fun or fly around. I'm sure that's going to be quite fun. <laughs> you know, when you're in the when you're when you're in fourth dimensional consciousness, that's an that's a given. By the way, you're able to fly. So. Yeah, flying. I'm sure, there's there's a whole lot of fun things you can do, but I, I hope I hope to get the fun things out of the way. So, I can, and that's part of the preparation for for learning how to get out of the body is that there's a lot of spiritual work. In my opinion, there, you know, for what I would like to do, what not so much for what I like to do, but what I commissioned myself to do. Put it that way. I think it's it's like we were talking about earlier, Monica, that you feel within you, you know, certain things, even though you may not know the whole thing, but you know enough that that keeps you grounded and rooted toward and, and on track. Right. So I, I, I've been doing the things that I know to do because I know those to be. The things that I'm, I'm, I'm I intended to do, uh, but being able to get out of the body is going to fortify that much more. It's going to, I won't have questions that I can't get answered through direct experience, be able to archive my records, you know. So look at my past lives, look at my connection, my lineage and everything like that. Look at my specific intentions through the process and reintegrate things. Is it ascension or is it it reintegration? It's reintegration. From my perspective, that's what it is. And looking at the direction I'm going into being able to uh, um, re- reconnect my higher faculties, specifically going out of the body, allows for that to happen. So, yeah. But flying's nice. 
not with me. Hey, this is fun. I want to fly some more. <laughs> but anyhow, so that's uh, that's it. I, I, yeah. I didn't want to spend so much time talking about it, but anyhow. I'm glad you did. Well, well, it's, I, I would like to hear what you gals have to say about any of that. <laughs> Everybody, I avoids. remember flying, but only in my childhood. Dream um, it again and again in the yeah, nights, and I can choose the destinations as well. Sorry, I have a tendency to talk too much. I'm Go ahead. Glad you, I'm glad you do. <laughs> Me too. I'm not good, I'm not good at playing. You do. <laughs> well, this, this, I, I can't include. I cannot include myself in on that. I have a tendency to talk way too much, and I think it's just trying to fill in space. You know, I don't. So I apologize for that. But if you're walking in the true nature of who you are, are you given enough space for you to be able to hold that space where you're walking in that, and you find comfort because that's where that's the catalyst is that the comfort it gives you, knowing I f I'm I'm bringing home within me in this to this manifestation, and nothing can really really knock you off that, you know. Um, it can, it, of course, it can. Uh, things around you can affect it without question, but to hold that space, you're not going to really. You're not going to be drawing any attention to yourself. In other words, you're not going to, you know, use the expression, you're not going to cross paths within that which is an opposition. So the boogeyman is not going to come your way. Because you're just not going to cross paths because it's not part of that path. So, you know, unless, you know, I was mentioning it earlier, um, unless that particular being crosses your path on purpose because for their benefit they're looking to get something from you that's helped because a lot of beings they're tired of being in this space that they're in mm. you know and so there's a there's another area as far as assistance and that takes mm. you know that takes uh right. that takes maturity and development spiritual walk you know to be able to assist beings like that and only reason why they would show up for you to help them like that is because they knew that you could help them. They're not going to show up if you don't, you know, you're not capable, you know, so there's, you know, no worries about that. But there's a lot of things you can do that just, you just simply cannot do in manifestation alone. Manifestation take, and under these conditions, it takes too long. And next thing you know, you, you're, this vessel's expired. So, you know, that should be like the primary thing that people hand in hand, when you have certain movements and stuff like that, and they're bringing forth what is considered to be valuable information, if they're not bringing the ability to be able to get out of the body and be able to teach that, then they're, they're, it's a disservice because people become dependent on the person who's delivering the message. And then they follow the message up to a point. Next thing you know, they're following the messenger. And then we're back full circle where we begin in respect to, you know, the re-legion, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. To where it's, it's not about the individual. It's about individuals following something outside of themselves as for, for the uh, substance of truth of who they are. And all they need to do is get out of the body and there's a protocol with all that and there's a process and there's you know the the study and learning and everything goes hand everything goes hand in hand but that's where they learn things on a personal direct experience they don't need to have a person anybody that's an intermediary you know so right that's that's kind of one of been one of my little pet peeves i never really talked too much about but i'm kind of talking about it now you know the obvious things that which is our natural birthright right needs to be equally, if not above, those things included in regards to what's being taught. Because you need to find out who what the truth really is for yourself in that regard. You know, you don't need to follow anybody. You need to know what your particular intention and purpose for being in manifestation is if you don't know. And you can't learn that through somebody else. Not really. 
you can glean things through other people. You certain things can give you uh, bits and pieces of understanding, and you, but you will never know until you actually know. It's just, it, it becomes more of a process of belief until you come to know. Where if you get out of the body, you learn how to do that. It just like it really expedites the whole process. What would normally take you, you know, decades, you can learn within six months. You know, so very vital, very important. Yes, I heard a very good metaphor for that. You can feed someone, you can give um, someone, somebody to drink, but you never can go to the toilet for someone. <laughs> right. Well, it's like it's it's like the, the fishing analogy, which would be similar to that. Where okay. you te teach somebody, if you teach somebody the fish, it's better than giving them a fish for a meal because if you teach them how to do it, then they can do it for themselves, right? And it's a, it's 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 the same thing. So in being able to, so in other words, what you were saying was going to the source, giving everybody the ability to go to the source, uh, rather than going through somebody else to get the glass of water, right? Say, can I have a glass of water? If you know where to, how to do it yourself, you, need to, you don't need to ask, you just know how to get it. Yeah. In this universal construct, uh, source of the creation, um, I am a guest, I'm a guest of honor, but it belongs to source. And I am thankful for that. But right. because I am a guest of honor, I have all things available to me. As I wish, I can have it. So, you don't have to ask permission. It's already given. Yeah. So, on um, the clues that he gave at the end of the video on how to begin um, practicing out of body. Oh, okay. at the end? Yeah. yeah. Well, actually, there's so many. What what inspired me to send that to you is because of his own personal experience. There's certain things in there that are just, oh, I could spend a lot of time just talking about because it was just. Uh, there was a lot packed in there. there yeah. Oh, there there really is a lot a lot of wisdom in that and a lot of revealing within it. But there is a lot of different sources from which you can learn these techniques. And they, that's where he got it from. And where I, where he, where he, where he, excuse me, where he was uh, pulling from, I was familiar with as well. And that's where I was looking to go when I first, but before I got interrupted with all that. But um, yeah, so I mean, the techniques, are, that's something I'm going to look to put together because I'm going to bring it to the group. Okay. Um, the more I get into it and more I'm practicing and I'm going to share with that. Because again, like I was saying earlier, it's, it goes hand in hand with any information that you're learning. You know, if you can't, you know, wisdom is knowledge applied. And so we're very limited within this manifestation of how we can apply the knowledge, right? But if we are go out of the body, we have firsthand personal direct experience and reintegration as far as recall, learning about truly who and what we are. The list goes on of all the things that we can recover, um, then it makes sense to be able to do it. If you don't have that, then it, you got a bunch of people, no offense, myself included, stumbling around trying to figure things out, you know, blind leading the blind. <laughs> I guess that's a good analogy in some respects because it, it, I, I have people responding and, and uh, um, talking about this to me personally where they feel like they're, been doing these various things for a very long time and it just seems like they're kind of butting their head against the wall they're not really going anywhere with it it just seems like one thing after another but it doesn't seem to go any uh, there's no really true movement with it you know as far as with themselves they don't feel a, a forward motion it's just kind of just like they're still waiting for things to happen and they have to do this and they have to do that and, and it just it becomes um it just feels con um constraining it's like it just there has to be something better than this that's the feeling i get and i know what it is it's like okay i personally have to recover can't go back to what we we're talking about earlier you can't depend on anybody or a teaching or anything like that for that 
all that is supplementary. It's a way that can help you, perhaps, but once you start to um, recover what you need to recover yourself through direct experience, you don't need that anymore. Now, especially you're, you're, you're having direct contact with certain beings or part of your soul family and your guides and so on and so forth and everything. And then you get to a certain stage where you don't have to consult them about anything. You All you have to do is go ask and it will, it's there. It's all you have to do. And so it's such a huge factor in how that we can be effective here within manifestation. If we're here to serve or we're here for the benefit of all life here, then we need all the tools that we can in order to be able to do that. We're not meant to come into it blind and kind of wondering where we're going to, you know, what we're going to do next or how we're going to do it, you know. It's just like, no, there has, there has to be a better way. And we all instinctively know there's a better way. You know, we don't... There should be no need to be waiting, waiting for somebody to do something or do. We don't need that. We don't need to wait on anybody. We need to act according to what we know. And just to, to use the word instinctively, because instinctively, this is a normal thing to want to do this. You know, just other things get in the way says that you can't, you know, and that's just silliness, as we all know, you know, fear based nonsense. So. Again, you know, there's plenty of information, you know, through the Monroe Institute. I mean, <laughs> there's a whole institution created around this. And uh, that's where he pulled that information from as well. So there's just a lot of different sources to go to for this. Worth, yeah. Um, reading Robert Monroe's book, Journey Out of the Body. Do you think it's worth investing in reading that? Yeah, definitely. This is a priority to me. This is like, this is the thing I have no other desire to do except for this right now. It's like this is the next stage for me to do what I'm intended to do here. This is a must. So it's interesting when you, it's interesting speaking, talking about the idea of fear and how fear can hold things. When you know what you're supposed to do and you know this is the next step and it's not a matter of choice, this is just it. This is a requirement without question, without any filter without seeing anything to the left or to the right to the left whatever narrow vision of what that that fear thing starts to go because your will transcends it mm -hmm. it's a huge thing because i noticed that it's like because when i started to try to do this before right here it was like something would stop me it's like this fear thing because i know where it comes from i know mm -hmm. where it came from. yeah but it takes it's a process to realize certain things and then when you finally it's not like at, at that time it was i didn't i wasn't at 100 percent. i wasn't like this is what i need to, i don't see where you don't see anything but and it has to be like that honestly for me i know it has to be like that okay mm -hmm. but when you if you if you're not that 100 percent, you're going to have that it's other stuff is going to creep in it's going to it's going to take forever but if you're 100 percent it's not it's 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 going to take the pros time that is required but it's going to be a lot less fear is the biggest obstacle with this the biggest it, yes. it keeps you from doing everything it paralyzes you yeah. it keeps you from doing anything in life you know it keeps you from doing anything and it's here's the thing again it's yeah. fake the experience is real but guess what you can change it. That's what you do within manifestation. You change stuff. You create. That's what you're here for. To expand. That fear thing, that doesn't belong to you. You know? So it just, it's, it's a matter of getting to that conscious level, which like, okay. Where you don't even give it any attention anymore. It's like, you just... And what I find that kind of transcends it, this is something that I noticed earlier in my life, especially within with a ministry or something like that. Something really just really intense would come at me inside. I'd be laughing. <laughs> and you know, that's your spirit. That's you. That's the real you going. Just it's, it's, you know, it's a joke, you know, cause nothing can harm you. It's that you may not understand. I understand a lot better now, you know, even then I just like, you know, understood, but not quite like I do now. 
That's the thing. Nothing can come to harm to you. Come here. That's such a cute pup. That puppins is so cute. Oh, stop showing me your puppets. I'm getting jealous. <laughs> he he he's wants such, attention he's a, now. Oh, I bet he does. He's he's a sweetheart. He's definitely a sweetheart. Did you, uh, Deborah? You hear what he's talking? When he, remember, did you hear what he said about the animals? Yes, of course I did. It's like yay. That makes see? me excited. Yeah, see, uh, no, I understand this is here. It's, it's, this is a pro, this body is a program life form. I get it. But yeah. this, the, but the spark is never that. So I'm going to see, I'm going to, I knew, I always knew I was good. Here's the thing. Here, I'm, I'm sure, I'm going to share this. My scampy, when she passed away, I was so sad. I was so heartbroken over that. She came to visit me. Mm -hmm. She, I, I felt her walk and brush up against my legs, and she walked down the hallway. And I'm going, Scampy. I said, Thank you for showing up. Aww. So, you know, it's not what Avalon Soul said, now was it? No. And I knew that because I knew that experience that long time ago. Yeah. yeah. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna see. And guess what she's gonna do? She's gonna talk to me. <laughs> I know. I can hardly wait to hear what they they're have. Not, to say. They're not gonna. <laughs> She's not gonna bark. He's gonna. She's gonna. She's gonna talk to me. Say, hey, Randy, how you doing? Oh, God. glad to see you. You know, yeah. say, oh, I'm so glad to see you, Scampy. Of course, they're gonna have different names. Yeah. You know, but that's okay. You know, I but you know, that. you wouldn't yes. know each other. So, I can go do that now once I get out of the body. <laughs> yeah. Things like that. That's just so. Again, the emphasize. If I can't emphasize, please let me emphasize love and joy. This is what creates expansion. And when we can bring more of that back into manifestation, that is the demonstration of power. Because the whole creation is, is created through love and joy. Without that, it wouldn't be created. So, yeah. Number one thing, love and joy. And to be able to get as much of that within manifestation. And what comes with that is many, many, many faculties in regard to our true nature which is the ability to heal other people, to heal ourselves, to help free others who are bound here to this earth. The list goes on. I get very emotional about um, rescuing people that are bound here to yes. earth. My compassion just like. It's very strong with that. Huge. Yeah. yeah. I, it's it's just strong. I, I, I get giggly. I get giggly inside when I think about that. That's just and that's that's the joy. That's the joy. The joy of that is is the liberation bring being brought. Yeah. Um, I mean, we're here. What would would we come into manifestation for? I, I can I, I can I speak for all of us? I think we we all came here to heal. We came here for us to be, heal ourselves so we can heal others and mm -hmm. the, the, and to bring things back into the natural order, which is simply in uh, in simplest simplest terms is the abundance of love and joy of the true nature of who we are and that is all creation that's everything within all things that are matter and form has that spark of life within it which is that yeah. and that's why we're here and how we 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 need all the tools and that you know higher aspects of self in order to, to do that that's really what it is otherwise it's too much of a struggle and it's it's too difficult to do it becomes less of a, of a struggle and it becomes more of a joyous experience when we can be at liberty and freedom and being able to go out of the body and connect with all our other aspects of family and it be knowing that how much helped we're being helped when we ask for help. All we have to do is ask, you know, and here it's like, well, nothing's happening. All we have to do is go out and to know that's not the truth, you know. Yeah. And the thing of it is, it's important within our intention to be singleness of mind. When we say something, that's what it is. We don't go to the left. We don't go to the right. We don't say maybe it is that. So as Jesus said, let your yes be yes and your no be no. And to go out of the body to truly understand self and regain those aspects of our higher self and, you know, our higher attributes are faculties, if you will, is to have the ability to say yes or no. Right? So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
So we don't have to join in with anything we don't want to and have complete sense of sovereignty to do the very thing and tasks for which we come into manifestation for. You know? So I'm happy about it. And I know that here's the thing I would like to include. We can act, ask for assistance if we can't get out of the body. We can ask for assistance. Yeah. Training. And, and nobody will do anything unless you are ready to do it when you're ready. So there's preparation. I know I have preparation to do. That's what we're talking about, you know, earlier in regard to, uh, you know, programming. Because what it really is, just, uh, you know, programming the mind about the reality of the truth of what we're doing and what we're, we're, where our intention is going and planning ahead, you know, getting conditioned to be able to do it. And but when the time comes where you're where you're actually doing the techniques and you ask for assistance before you do it, it's listen, you know, they're going to assist you. Like when I get out of the body and I'm able to do that and I, I, I feel like, I can, OK, I can take it to the next level, whatever. I'm going to look to help. It's like, I'll have to do, oh, just ask me and I'll be there to help and I will do what I can. Doesn't necessarily mean uh, it will be successful <laughs> right away, but I'll be there to be able to do that. You know, as the more we do anything, the better we're going to be able to get at it. Point being is that we're here to assist one another um, within the physical and the multidimensional. You know, before it was like, Somebody else is doing stuff. No, we don't need to wait for other people to do it. We need to co-create now. That includes our, you know, uh, our family, our soul family, our, uh, you know, uh, guides, you know. And those, look, that's interesting. You talked about guides. And if you look at guides, you look at, you look at it in the context of incarnations. Because within incarnations, how many incarnations do you have had here on earth, you know? And you you could have, I could have, I know that I've been a woman. There's no question about that. I don't know how many times, but I've known this. I've known that uh, because just the way that I've held my space here in this world, and I just always seem to relate to women better. <laughs> it's because of um, the empathy that I had and certain things like that. So I know I've, but I can't recall a lot of things. I have bits and pieces of stuff. I don't want bits and pieces. I want the whole picture, you know. I want to know if, you know, if I was you know, raised on the cotton farm in Alabama and all this. I want to see it has all those things or a Native American Indian, you know, your what is understood within that culture, within that consciousness mindset. You'll have beings that come into form that are as your guides and they can take on the the, the form of you know, as the example, a coyote or, or an eagle or whatever, you know, it's important to understand these things and understand them truly for what they are so that never, ever you're working through fear ever, you know, it's like, oh, I'm stay with it. Because I remember as an example, now I'm starting to get a little personal, but it's okay. I feel that I can share it. My mother uh, she told me one time that she had some, somebody appear to her walking up with a, with a robe and he, he bald looking individual and he was carrying something um, from what I, I recall her saying and he was walking up to her within a vision or it was in within a state between you know and um, she said to him if you're not of Jesus Christ you know I don't accept you and all this other stuff so what this being did is like they just stopped they turned around and walked back what she did didn't know is that she had a connection to this being and she with because of fear she didn't allow for anything to come forward and they will not nobody that's walking in love and respect for all life is going to intrude upon you they will not do anything they'll come to you but if you reject them they'll walk away and it's you know they don't feel any way about it either way so it's important to understand things on a knowing level, not based on conditioning or programming uh, in that regard far as within the religious uh, perspective of belief systems. All that stuff needs to be pushed out of the way to say, okay, that's that. It's important to now know. And the only way that you're really going to know is through direct personal experience. And again, it goes back to what we're talking about, getting out of the body so that you can access 
those records and those archives of re the recordings of your life and your intentions behind that, what you experienced necessarily only for me, what I'd experienced with those would only be important to me, at least at this stage. I don't know about later, but at this stage, it's only important to me to be able to align myself to my true intention for the reason for coming into manifestation. Because if I came into manifestation the first time and I was able to fulfill it, I probably wouldn't come back if I completed it in one lifetime. But because of how things have been here and you get bounced back and forth, you forget when you're here and yada, 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 you have these multitude of incarnations, you know? And if you desire to reincarnate over and over and over again, because you want to experience things on a vast level, and that's, my understanding for me is like, if you're going to be uh, a, a source creator or to express yourself as a source creator in regard to creating other universal constructs. The reason for coming, one of the reasons for coming into a uh, source consciousness field is so that you can experience everything. So when you do create, you're, you're using that as a platform for which you now you can write your own verse, right? So, but at this stage for me, it simply would be a matter of being able to Go back to my original intention, how this all relates so that I can reintegrate that and bring it into the present incarnation, you know. Um, but again, that's my position at this point. It may change, you know, it may become something more than that or whatever it may be. I'm not putting any restrictions on it, but that's the way I perceive it at this stage. That's my intention. So again, you know, just to kind of put a cap on it. If this um, is not really being brought with other information that that is considered to be vital to know about this universal construct, then it's a mis it's a it's a misservice. You know, you know what I'm saying? So it's important to be able to get out of the body so you have direct knowing. You know, not and then you can affirm whether or not what other people said, and it's not a matter of judgment, it's just knowing. And then you can say, well, you know, that's okay. I disregard that. I don't need that. You know, or I, I, I'll take with that. Oh, I want to know more about that. So you take whatever that knowledge aspect is and you take it into these uh, higher realms and you go, okay, I'm looking for affirmation. You're thinking for yourself, I'm looking to know. What is this? I mean, truly understand. You may not be able to bring back all that information because that's probably too much information to bring back, but you'll have enough understanding right? To where it's like, okay, uh, you can embrace one thing or you can disregard the other you know, in that respect. Uh, let's see, somebody else come in? Did somebody else come in? Anybody notice anything? Mm -hmm. Oh, somebody came in for the Michael Dean interview. They clicked on the old link. Oh. Any hoot. Thank you so much. Yes. Dear Randy Keith. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, yes, it's great. And I know I, I, I was out of my body two times. Um, 2017 one time mm -hmm. when I'm an ad adult and 2018. But I have no feeling for time. Yeah. So it was very interesting. You think it's about 30 um, seconds because my I have no feeling, but it could as well very long distance. I don't know. Um, and I come back only. I was wondering that my body is not um, um, breathing anymore and but I was it back. <laughs> it, it was right. kind like thinking. It, it was a recognizing, and um, right. which I, I was I was back, and the second time it was very crazy. It was I, I was car driving, and I was car driving in the highway, and my body was car driving, but I was not in there anymore. 
it was re really so surprising because my first time when I'm an adult, um, I lie lay in bed, so nothing can happen if you so will. Yes, it was totally secure, and it was during a meditation. But the second time, it was without any thing before. It happened when I right. saw the beauty, the beauty of of um, of a sundowner and a field with yeah. yellow flowers. Yes. And you and the rest of me was car driving in the highway and everything was safe. So this was amazing, <laughs> amazing experience. Yeah. Did anybody here familiar with quantum jumping? I've heard of it, but I couldn't tell you that I know no. of it. But imagine yourself walking down a flight of steps. Okay. You open a door and then there's a flight of steps and at a 45 degree angle and you walk down it's a flight of steps so it's, it would be like a floor right like when you go to a building or whatever and you have a, the distance of the floor from one floor to another think of it in those terms so you have a flight of steps and you walk down to the bottom of the flight of steps and there's a curtain there's a curtain and then you then when you part the curtain you have a door and when there's a door when you open that door you can project yourself and go into another world Okay, there's a bit more of a process to this, okay, because you have to kind of set yourself up for it and you, you, you're, you're adjusting your consciousness as you do this. So it takes a little while to do it. Um, once you learn how to do it, you can do it quickly. But anyhow, so I go through this process and I project myself and I don't have any idea where I'm going. Okay, I'm just allowing whatever happens to happen, you know. It's nice to be in that space. And so I do, and I'm in a field. And I'm a field, and I see my daughter. And my wife is there, but she's not there But because I, I only see my daughter. I don't know the extent of far as what this is about, but I'm overwhelmed. I start to cry. And it's like, and I just, I, I'm able to embrace her. And it was like, it was real. And so, you know, after that experience, I stepped away from that and I go, okay, I don't think I'm gonna do that for a while, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know? So, but what I took away from all that is, was affirmation of knowing who and what we are and how, what reality is. And it's important to know that you are creators. Everyone is a creator and that's the reason why I emphasize this, and I know this doesn't seem to be popular with a lot of people, and sometimes they don't really know what to do with this information. You are a co-creator and a source being at the same time. The complexity in the depth of, or should I say the magnitude of creations and the different variety of harmonic unit or not harmonic universes but universal constructs functioning within different laws of physics nothing like this one not even close the antithesis beyond your imagination within this one to be able to understand it what it would be or what they're like until you go into them and this is what we do we create a multitude of these different reality fields and the purpose behind it is to perpetuate creation and we go into them we like for the this source consciousness field you merge with this being you merge that's not that's an easy one to understand based on anybody who's been walking a spiritual path and understand truly who and what we are you're multiplistic you merge with this being and you take on the parameters of the design of this being this being's creation known as you know these constructs or or or, or or their or this these reality fields we all do this with one another the source being here does the same thing and goes into us and there's the, the there's no number there is well i've heard a number but i don't think it's really just to put a number it's like a one with so many zeros it just keeps going um of how many constructs there are each all different from one another we are creators. 
And it's a natural thing to create worlds and realities. And that's what we do. When we go out, as you mentioned, when we go out of the body, people can have a lot of experiences this experience with this, but to have knowledge and understanding of truly who what they are is a different story in a lot of these cases. Oh. But the reason why you're able to create, why things manifest like that, why that, mm-hmm. and understand that you have way more control over all this than what you, than you think. And when we are able to separate ourselves in regard to our true identity, to that of our manifest identity, because you, my take on this has been this way for a very long time. To bring in the true aspect of yourself is not going to compromise your manifest experience. It's going to enhance it. It's actually going to make it much more valuable to you as well as others. And some people would say, and I've heard this over said over and over again, we don't want to interfere with that. We don't want to talk to you about these other things. You don't need to know about these other things, yada, 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 because it's going to interfere with your experience here. Is it? Is it? Is it? Well, my case, and I believe I believe this, and I believed it for a long time. Now I know it to be true for me. That's not true. Having the ability to bring in more of who I truly am within manifestation is going to enhance it to where it should be. Because I understand the difference of knowing how to walk in both worlds. Mm-hmm. It's not going to compromise this whatsoever. It's going to make it better. I can appreciate manifestation for what it truly is because I understand what it is. When you're completely blank slated from the whole thing, how can you know that? Mm -hmm. How can you even have the choice to, to be able to experience that? And here's the thing. When you're in manifestation, there is a, there is a, the, the shield that you have within that protects you from the things from being, being overwhelmed by what's going on while being in the body. But the choice to be able to go outside of the body and to bring, because when you come back into manifestation, you're in manifestation. But because of what you're able to bring with you enhances that. It keep it, it makes the experience clear, understood, and ability to be able to enjoy it even more than you ever thought. Because most things are done in fear here. Oh, I better not do this. Oh, like, oh God's going to put me, you know, it's going to going to burn hell. Oh, you know, and that's the reason why we got hell worlds, because consciousness created that because of that indoctrination. Right. We're powerful, and it's about time that we become liberated. So I say to the idea of saying, well, we don't want to allow that happen because we don't want to interfere with your experience. You know what I have to say to that? (laughs) Wrong. (laughs) That's not true. You know? So it's like, be your own sovereign that you are. You know? Respect all life, but make choices for you what you intended to make and how can you know what those choices are if you don't have access to the true aspect of your identity and the information that comes along with it. Right. You know, so it's really simple to me, you know, people can choose whatever they want and they can choose to believe whatever they want, but I know this to be the real other stuff is just pretense and considering just throwing this into the works here, considering that this world and this aspect of the universe, the universe has been altered so much in regard to the creation mechanics, I'm going to go my way. <laughs> you know, yes. end of story. So, because there's a whole lot of doctrines out there, you know. Oh, yeah. I yeah. choose, I choose my own doctrine. <laughs> but you have to find out what that is. You got to find, you got to re, reintegrate. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So uh, going out of the body, definitely next step, you know, yeah. and then it's exciting, then teaching it, you know, sharing the experiences. Yeah. <laughs> Things happen, you know. Yeah. It's easy yeah. to get sidetracked, isn't it? It's just, it's easy to get derailed here. It oh, really yeah. is. At least for me, it's, that's been my experience. I 
<laughs> get knocked for a loop and you go, you just, you just stay loopy for a while, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I just had a pretty good lesson in that. So, yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll send this, I'll send the link to you, Monica, for that video that we're talking about. Okay. Okay. You're on mute. Thank you very much. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah. We're sitting there talking about it. I'm, I'm thinking, Monica probably I'm, wonder what you're talking about. <laughs> I, thought, I thought she had seen the video too. No, I just, I, I just, I just, I just wanted, I wanted to keep it on the download to, so that when we talked here, I thought maybe it might be one of the things that we discussed and it turns out to be the, the thing that it's, that was the topic of discussion here. I loved it. Uh, loved so. it. That was perfect. Perfect timing. Thank you. Perfect message. Well, thank you. Uh, thank you gals for showing up. And uh, like I said, whoever was meant to be here, like I always say, not just because I say it, just because it's true. Uh, whoever shows up is meant to show up. There was somebody else wanting to show up, but they they clicked on the wrong link. I don't know why they would Aww, click on a old. Yeah. That was like, how old is that link? That's like the first one or something. Yes, yeah. it's at least a month old, if not longer. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So anyhow, sorry about that. I just, well, they're the one who clicked on it, not me. So. <laughs> <laughs> Not like you didn't provide a new discussion. one. <laughs> so, anyway, what's that? Sorry, Monica. No, she would get the whole uh, podcast and discussion. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it I'll, I'll I'll be posting this on um, my YouTube channel, and then I'll just link it to the group, and whoever wants to watch it, they can watch it. So, I I all uh, watched all. A podcast uh, a second time so to get well bless your heart <laughs> I, do too. I know it's <laughs> yeah. I do too in fact I've listened to the last one you you did the one you did last week a couple times now because it's really such a good it was just good timing for me because um it was not a pleasant week last week it was just I needed to hear it whole lot of challenges uh, that have, I, you know, speaking firsthand for myself, whole lot of, no, <laughs> over several years, but um, more some, but uh, here lately, just, I don't know, there's, uh, is there something happening different here lately? Because I noticed stuff happening different lately, energetically. Have you noticed anything, Monica, for yeah. yourself? Um, I don't know. Everybody's talking about these solar flares. I don't know. What do you think, Monica? I I think there's more to it than well, that. What? Yeah, maybe, I think so. My, 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 maybe this or that, but what I experience when I go in the nature, and uh, I, we have a very lovely, I love it, nature reserve, yes. Oh, what awesome. I experience there, and I go for years there, it's completely different. I can see different things, I can feel different things. The sun is completely different when she's here. <laughs> So, we are in a change, definitely. Yes, from yeah. energies. Yeah. I think I think it's just, it's not necessarily one thing. It's all of the above, you know. Oh. Whatever yeah. whatever's yeah. happening, it's happening on a very large level. And uh, yeah, so a lot of stuff. Again, you know, before we go, just to maybe make mention of this, uh, going out of the body helps the process in regards to the distortions within you know, in respect to the shadow body, which is the emotional and mental uh, harmonic aspect of consciousness within this, you know, yeah. first uh, density. So it's going to be, um, that, that's, a ch I understand that how that's going to be, a ch that's going to be challenging to deal with because with, while being in the body, um, there's a lot of things that are kind of kept below the waterline. But when you, <laughs> when you release that, you pull the, the cap off that bottle, it start it starts to overflow, and it's like it can be a bit overwhelming. But that's a part that's a part of the process in respect to healing, and being able to take control of the things again and bring it into balance. Yeah. So you know. Well, like he was I, saying. I hope I, I hope I don't go to grocery stores and throw bottles. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But who knows? You know, I know. Again, everything it has everything to do with knowing what you're getting into before you do it. It's like planning a trip, right? So that you know, okay, this is what's going to happen. How am I going to deal with it before I get there? You know, 
and or and, th and that goes into the, that falls into the context of a se seeking assistance. Mm. Right. So, I mean, we're not I, I would have to emphasize this. Don't look to do this alone. You know, be in the right space, work through love and ask for assistance while you're doing what you're doing. It's they're going they're going to be there to help and they're going to be able to once you get out of the body, they're going to be there to be able to assist you in the process of, of you making the transition and getting your, you know, getting your footing, so to speak. And uh, so it's, you know, we don't have to do this alone. You can, but you don't have to. And I I'm I'm, I'm looking. I think it's a feel with inside me deeply that I need to connect with assistance that's part of letting go of the fear thing too you know because that regardless i still deal with that you know it pops up it pop it, it comes up with inserts parts of my body and you, it's it's an ongoing thing so i understand what's there for me and i know how it's important for me to treat this and there is a process of letting go that is also uh expediting in the process of healing it's knowing that there's nothing to fear, regardless. Even though it's there, it's present, it's real, it's mm -hmm. not real, real, and it doesn't belong to you, to emphasize that again, it doesn't belong to me, it doesn't belong to us. And then having assistance in the process of that um, is going to uh, manifest assistance. So it's important to know that we don't need to do it alone, we can, but it would be better not to, you know. So, again, it has to do with everybody's individual walk, but us here, we're talking about from the point of being of service to humanity. We're here for a particular mission. It all plays part with co-creative interaction and participation with one another, you know, assisting. So I guess that's it. Unless any of you gals have anything else you would like to add? Not today, but thank you so much uh, for this podcast and this content and these topics today. Thank you very much. Well, um, you know, in, inward and outward, as as the saying I just came up with, <laughs> 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 because that's what it is, isn't it? It's going yeah. within to yes. be able to bring it out and uh, give it away. So there it is. Deborah, thank <laughs> <Love> you. <laughs> right, Me gals. too, um, Randy. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. And we will. And you we're are gonna we're, we're going to schedule this again for. Next, next week. Yes. Same same time. If we, if you want to start earlier, that's fine. If you want to start 11 o'clock. We can do 11 o'clock. Is 11 o'clock good, Deborah? As well for me. Yes. Because that, that would be 11 at 1 o'clock over your time, I suppose. Right? Yeah, that's right. Yes. What time is it for you, Monica? Um. <clears throat> Now it's ten thirty-five PM. Yeah. So so that that works out good. So nobody's like too late or too early, you know. So seems to work. Uh, it's because on the uh, so New York, that's uh, it's going to be two o'clock there. Um, and then you know people can drop in in the middle of it or whatever. Like I said, it's an open podcast, so whatever they want to show up, they can show up. You know, they want to leave, they can leave. They don't have to need to ask permission. Permission is already granted. They don't, you know, they can do whatever they would like. And so Canada, if anybody wants to join from there, uh, that would be the same thing as New York time. Basically, there's going to be like a three hour difference there too, for the most part around there in that area. Um, so across the pond, Africa, so 10 hours, nine hours, Germany or UK area. So that works out. It kind of works out for everybody, basically, you know. So, yeah, eleven o'clock seems to be better. So let's let's do that one. Yep. Yeah. Okay. But today we were four: Lenny and Monica, <laughs> Deborah and Randy. <laughs> I'll have to bring Ollie on next time so Ollie can see your puppy. My I was, okay. I was I was I was I was I was debating on going there and getting Dorian, but. During it, he's, he's sleepy, he's sleeping, he's grumpy. He'll be just like, yeah, yeah. Ollie wouldn't know what like was going James, on. Like James, like, like a little James Cagney or something. Yeah, yeah she. Yeah. <laughs> Anyhow, all right, all right, guys. I want to go okay. ahead. Say goodbye to everybody. Okay, bye. Bye, bye everybody.